Today you're going to make mole conversions. These calculations use the principles of dimensional analysis that we learned back in Unit 1. Proper setup of each problem using units and appropriate conversion factors is very important. I also want you to round your final answer to the correct number of significant figures, too. The two conversion factors we're going to use today is that 1 mole equals molar mass, which we did in Unit 4, and that 1 mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules, which we learned back in Unit 2. So you're going to need your periodic table and a calculator. So pause the video while you get those materials. In problem 1, you're asked to find how much 3.5 moles of carbon atoms weigh. So you're going to set up your t-chart like you normally do and put the given in the top left. Units are very important. So I have 3.5 moles of carbon in the top left. And it enforced to put moles of carbon in the bottom right. By the way, MOL is shortcut for moles. I'm allowed to put grams of carbon in the top right because I, on the previous slide, one mole of anything is its molar mass from the periodic table. So I'm going to put one with mole. I'm going to put 12 with grams carbon because when I look on the periodic table, 12 is next to the molar mass of carbon. I'm going to be able to cross out my units of moles of carbon, and then I will multiply 3.50 times 12 and divide by 1, and that's going to give me 42 grams of carbon. And when I look at my significant figures, 3.50 has 3 sig figs, and 12 has 2 sig figs. I'm going to ignore the 1. The 1 is called an exact number when I have it next to mole, so I only look at the other numbers, the grams and the givens. So since I have two sig figs, I need two sig figs in my answer, which I do already have. Let's look at the next problem. Take a moment to read the problem and set up the t-chart with a given in the top left. You should put 153 grams in the top of your box. What unit is going to be needed in the bottom right? Pause while you decide. You should have decided to put grams of mg on the bottom since it's going to match diagonally. It's asking for moles, so I can put moles in the top because I'm allowed to relate grams to moles. Go ahead and decide what numbers you should go next to mole and next to gram. Pause while you decide, and then check your answer. You should have decided to put 1 next to mole and 24 next to grams of magnesium. Mole is going to always be 1 for these problems that we're doing today, and the grams will be the molar mass from the periodic table. So again, I'm going to cancel out the units in the top and bottom because they divide, divide each other and become 1. Then I multiply the top numbers and divide by the bottom. When I do the calculation, I get 6.375 moles of magnesium. Go ahead and round that to sig figs. Pause while you do so. You should have determined that there were three significant figures in 153 and two significant figures in 24. Therefore, you should round your answer to two sig figs, which would be 6.4 moles of mg. All right, let's go on to the next one. We've got 3.50 times 10 squared grams of copper, and we're trying to find the atoms. So go ahead and set up your t-chart, put your given in the top left, and decide what goes in the bottom number, bottom right. Pause while you do so. You should have grams of copper on the bottom. You're forced to put mole on top. But it's asking me for atoms, and I have mole on the top. So that's not going to work. I need to have atoms on the top. So when this happens, you're going to expand your t-chart one more time, and you'll be forced to put moles of copper on the bottom right, because the units have to match diagonally. 
And then I can put atoms on top, because I'm allowed to relate atoms to moles or grams to moles. So I can put atoms of moles, excuse me, atoms of copper on the top. Now that you have all your units in place, I want you to decide what number should go there. So pause the video while you decide what numbers to put into the four boxes, and then resume the video to check your answer. You should have put one next to each mole. You should have put 64 next to grams because that is a molar mass of copper. And you should have put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd next to atoms. So anytime you see mole in your T-chart, you should use 1. Anytime you see grams, you should use the molar mass from the periodic table. And anytime you see atoms or molecules, you need to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Go ahead and multiply the numbers at the top and divide by the bottom, and then check your answer. Pause the video while you do so, and then resume to check. You should be able to cancel out all of your units except for atoms of copper. And when you multiply the top and divide by the bottom, you get 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 24. Looking at sig figs, 350 had 3 sig figs, 64 had 2, and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd had 3 sig figs. So my final answer had to have 2 sig figs. For the next problem, I'd like if you feel comfortable, I'd like you to go ahead and try to set this problem up by yourself and then check your answer. Go ahead and pause the video and start trying to set this up. If you have trouble, go ahead and play the video, and you can see the answer. So if you're checking with me, so far you have molecules in the bottom and mole on top. If you have mole, you're going to use 1. If you have molecules, you're going to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You're going to multiply the top and divide by the bottom. So we have to use our scientific notation rules to do so. When you, do, when you calculate this, you get, should get 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7 moles of oxygen because the molecules are going to cross out. For the remainder of the worksheet, if you feel comfortable with 1 through 4, then you can pause the video and go ahead and work on 5 through 10. There are keys in the room so you can check your answers. If you get stuck, you can either ask me for help or watch the video. If you're still having lots of trouble, go ahead and continue using the video to help coach yourself through the problems. There's also an alternative using cards with the different conversion factors that can help you with these problems. It's a bit of a crutch. I prefer you didn't use them, but if you're really stuck after, say, number 7, then make sure you get my attention and I'll show you how to use the cards. So the rest of the video is for people who are still really having trouble with the setup, and I'm just going to talk my way through it, um, and you can pause. The best thing to do is as you start working on the problem, pause the video, then try your best, then watch the video for that problem. Good luck! Number five is how much 1.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sulfur would weigh. So I need to change the atoms of sulfur to mass. So I'm going to start with 1.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sulfur. Down below I need atoms of sulfur, and that's going to have to equal moles of sulfur. So since I'm trying to find mass in my top number here is, or excuse me, my top unit here is mole. That's not going to work. I have to have atom uh, mass up there. So I'm going to need to expand my t-chart again. So I expand it one more time. I'm going to have to put mole in the bottom right. So again, your units need to match diagonally. So mole, sulfur, and mole, sulfur are going to be able to cancel each other out. Since now I have moles in the denominator, I can put mass on top. Mole is going to be able to equal to everything. It's the, it's the one unit that once you get into, you have lots of power. Then you're going to put your numbers in. If you haven't, if you're still working with the video, try pausing it now and putting the numbers in. If you're just checking the answers, then keep going. So I have 1 and 1 for moles. I have 32 for grams of sulfur. And of course, next to atoms, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. My units cross out diagonally, and I multiply the top and divide by the bottom. My final answer 
is 64 grams of sulfur. For number six, I'm asked to convert moles to atoms of nickel. So I have 0 0.050 moles of nickel. I'm just taking it out of scientific notation. It doesn't matter if you did or didn't. Down here, we'll have moles of nickel. And the top is asking for atoms, which I'm allowed to put with moles. So next to mole, I will always put 1 for these problems. And next to atoms, I will put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Multiply the top, divide by the bottom, and cross out my units. And I get 3.0 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of nickel. For number seven, I'm asked to find the moles of gold present in a 450 gram sample. So 450 grams of gold, be careful to use AU and not AG here. I have grams of AU at the bottom, and I'm allowed to put moles on top. I'm allowed to make grams or atoms or molecules equal to mole. So anytime I see mole, I'm going to put one. When I see grams, I need to look on the product table, and I look up gold, and it's 197. The grams of copper are going to cancel out, multiply the top, divide by the bottom, and I get 2.3 moles of gold. Again, remembering that the 1 is an exact number, and we don't use it for sig figs. Number 8, what's the mass of 4.8 moles of sulfur trioxide? So I have 4.8 moles of sulfur trioxide. We're using our covalent naming rules here. Down here will be moles of sulfur trioxide. And it's asking me for mass. So I can put grams on top since I have moles on the bottom. If I see mole, I put 1. If I see grams, I look up the mass from the periodic table. Sulfur is 32 and oxygen is 16. So 3 times 16 plus 32 gives me 80 grams. And that's my molar mass of sulfur. Multiply the top, divide by the bottom, cross out my units, and I get 380 grams of SO3. Two sig figs is all I need. For number 9, how many molecules are present in a 145 gram sample of sodium chloride? So I start with my given as 145 grams of NaCl. Down here will be grams of NaCl. And I'm forced to put mole on top. It's asking me for molecules, and I have mole as my top unit, which means I'm going to have to expand my t-chart out. So I'm going to put mole here at the bottom. I'm forced to do that since the top left is mole NaCl now. And now I can put molecules of NaCl on top. And then go ahead and put the numbers in. I know mole is 1. I know grams comes from the periodic table, so Na plus Cl gives me 58. And I tell my C atoms or molecules, I'm going to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is going to allow my grams of NaCl to cancel out, my moles to cancel out. Multiply the top and divide by the bottom. And I get 1.5 times 10 to the 24th molecules of NaCl. Be careful not to abbreviate molecules as MOL or MOLE, since that would be confused with mole. Last problem. I have 0 0.50 moles of silicon. I want to know how many atoms that is. So again, I'm going to start with my t-chart. I have 0 0.5 moles silicon. I'm forced to put moles of silicon at the bottom is asking me for atoms, and I'm allowed to put atoms back with moles. So one mole is next to the mole silicon, and the atoms again would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. The moles cancel out, I multiply the top, and divide by the bottom, and I get 3.0 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silicon.